Hello and welcome to tonight's screencast of the respiratory system. So, so far in the anatomy physiology or applied physiology unit, we've had a look at uh, the muscular system and the cardiovascular system. Now, if we just have a quick revisit to the cardiovascular system, we had a look at particularly how the cardiac part of the cardiovascular system allowed us to conduct a heartbeat uh, via the conduction system, which then controlled the cardiac cycle. Following on from that, we then had a look at uh, heart rate, stroke, volume, cardiac output definitions for these, resting values, and then what happened depicted on a graph during different intensities of exercise. The final thing we looked at in the, in the cardiovascular system, sorry, was um, this idea of the redistribution of blood flow. So we had a look at the vascular shunt process and how this got uh, blood to the working muscles because they needed them. Now, I think at this point uh, in A-level P, we have an understanding. The reason why the blood moves to the working muscles is because our muscles require oxygen within the blood to those working muscles. Now, the, this unit, the respiratory system, gives us a real understanding of the process of getting oxygen in the air into our lungs and then once we get it into our lungs how do we get it into the blood and then how do we get it to the muscles so now we're looking at the processes behind air moving into our lungs and then from that how we diffuse the gases to where that we want them to go so that's the process now uh, if you have a look on the big picture here we've got to look at certain things today's screencast is going to have a look at the following so we're looking at the relationship between breathing frequency tidal volume minute ventilation then we're going to have a look at them mechanics of breathing. So that's what we're doing now. Uh, we'll finish this off in the lesson. So structure and function of the respiratory system then. So what we're looking at here then is this idea, the, the structure and function you don't need to know, but this idea of getting air in through our nasal cavity, okay, then down into our lungs, then transferring it from the lungs or diffusing it from the lungs into the blood and then getting it to our working muscles. So the first process we're going to now have a look at is the idea of how do we define the different volumes of the lungs? Okay, so we're going to have a look at breathing frequency, we're going to have a look at tidal volume, we're going to have a look at minute ventilation. Um, but also, after that, we could have a look at the mechanics that allow us to get that air in and get that air out. So that's what we're looking over the next kind of eight to 10 minutes. So if we have a look then, key definitions, we've got breathing frequency, uh, which basically refers to the number of breaths taken per minute. An average resting value would be about 12 breaths per minute. So going on from there, Tidal volume. So tidal volume refers to the volume of air inspired or expired per breath. Average value would be 500 milliliters. And then what we have to do is times these two together to get our third volume, which is minute ventilation, which refers to the volume of air inspired or expired per minute. So there are three values, okay, or volume, sorry. Now what we need to do, just quickly have a look at the equation. So the equation or relationship between these three lung volumes, as I just mentioned, was this. Tidal volume times breathing frequency equals minute ventilation, or those two could be swapped round. Now, if that's put into numerically, 500 milliliters times 12 breaths per minute equals 6,000 milliliters or six liters per minute, okay? Really important we get the units right here. Um, so if I just ask you at this point, there are key uh, lung volumes at rest. Now what we're going to do is have a look at the mechanics that allow us to get air in and out. Now before I do that, just have a quick look at the thoracic cavity. So the thoracic cavity is basically where everything happens that we're interested in for this specification for uh, the respiratory system. So what is a thoracic? What is it? And the thoracic cavity, we did talk about this with regard to the respiratory pump as a mechanism to maintain venous return. So what is it? If you want to define it, if you want to make a note of this, feel free to do so. It's basically a chamber of the body that is protected by the ribs. Now you can't actually see the ribs here, but what you can see are these two muscles here, the external and internal intercostal muscles, which are actually attached to the ribs. So these act as a kind of wall around the thoracic cavity and inside there we've got the lungs and we've got the diaphragm okay the diaphragm is a key respiratory muscle which i'll have a look at in a second so that's the thoracic cavity we'll have a look at the changes to this thoracic cavity as we go through the mechanics of breathing so the mechanics of breathing then we're going to look at it just at rest in the screencast and then the lesson we'll have a look at it at exercise so when we're talking about uh, mechanics of breathing we're interested in two key things inspiration and expiration inspiration the process of breathing in expiration the process of breathing out now if you're going to talk about the mechanics of breathing we're looking at the mechanisms within the physical 
tangible mechanisms within our respiratory system that allow us to breathe in or out. So we'll start off, whenever you're talking about the mechanics of breathing, whether it's inspiration or expiration, you've got to consider this in the right order. What we know from the muscular system is that bones don't move unless muscles pull them. So what we're going to do now, or contract, so what we're going to look at the two key respiratory muscles that cause our ribs to move. Okay, now once this happens, this will have a direct knock-on effect on the volume in our lungs, or the thoracic cavity volume, and the thoracic cavity pressure, and the final impact will be on air moving in or out of the lungs, so air direction with regard to uh, the lungs. So, that's our focus, that's our structure, we're going to start off with inspiration, the process of breathing in, so when we breathe in, inspiration is an active process, and what that means is that the respiratory muscles contract to move the ribs. Two specific respiratory muscles are the diaphragm and the external intercostal muscles. They contract. So the diaphragm is this one here. So you can see it coming across here. That will contract and flatten. When it does that, it pushes the ribs up and out. So the ribs will then move up and out. Now, as a result of that, if the ribs move up and out, it increases the volume or the thoracic cavity volume. So there's more space in, in that kind of uh, inside the rib cage because it moves up and out. On top of that, because there's more space in there, it means the air is moving at a lower pressure. And finally, all of this means that because these have contracted, the ribs have moved up and out, volume increases, pressure decreases. This means that more, or sorry, the air will move into or rushes into the lungs. So you must make sure you've got the air uh, direction at the end of that. So if that's inspiration then, let's have a look at expiration. It works in the exact opposite manner. So again, we've got our key structure, respiratory muscles, rib movement, volume, pressure, and air. So now, and this is really important, when you're talking about expiration, the process of breathing out at rest, this is actually a passive process. A passive process basically refers to the fact that the muscles do not contract. So what happens is, if this uh, contracts and flattens down here, okay, when you breathe out, this just moves back up and relaxes. Okay, so the respiratory muscles, both the ones that are attached to our ribs here, the external intercostal muscles, and also the diaphragm, they relax on expiration. If you just have a quick practice now, breathe in and breathe out. They don't contract, they relax. You might have felt that then. So going on from there, diaphragm, relax. External intercostal muscles, relax. What that does is causes the ribs to move down and in. As a result of this, there is a decreased thoracic cavity volume because the space in between the ribs decreases. And because of the, the lack of space, this then means there is an, an increase in the thoracic cavity pressure or the lung pressure. Okay. Now, as a result of this, the air will rush out of the lungs. Can I ask you to make notes on that, please? Uh, that's at rest. And what we're going to do is have a look at how it changes when we start to exercise. Okay. Thanks very much.